Reverend, Reverend Lewis, before he starts, you're getting a feedback. Jesus recognized these qualities in children 
that are similar to God's meaning of greatness. And he challenged the disciples to let go of their claims to power or greatness. And he saw himself and said, and at about that time, the disciples came to Jesus to ask which one of them was the greatest in the kingdom. Jesus called a little child over and set him in the midst of them and said, Now look, unless you turn to God from your sins and become as a little children, you'll never get into the kingdom of heaven. Anyone who humbles himself as this child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And he says, he said, and any of you who welcomes a little child like this in my name is welcome to me. But if any of you mistreat one of these little ones, who believes in me, he said, it would be better for you to have a little stone arise in there and throw it into the sea. Mm-hmm. He said, war to the world for all it is. He said, now just say Mm-hmm. And, and in the Jewish world, the children, 
children were to be seen and not heard. They work as laborers to advance the family wealth and prosperity. But their words and their actions were rarely had, very seldom had any meaning, any real meaning. Children was considered really nothing. And girls was treated worse than boys, but they all had a problem with trying to get through to adult, adult people and their parents because they, they, they didn't care about them. They just used them to advance their wealth and everything. And it's a sad thing. So when Jesus called his disciples and telling him, telling them the quality they need, you know, Jesus called a little child over. That was rare. That was rare because most of the kings and all that, they didn't have nothing. The child was nothing, really. They were really nothing to him. So here Jesus is to calling this child on and saying, we need the qualities of this child. We need this characteristics and the traits of, of, a, of a child. He said, we need most of all humility. We need, he said, the child has humility, innocence, openness accepting and trust and dependency and that was just the name of you he said now you need to become like a little child now um he, he put emphasis on the word become because if you look at that he was saying uh, uh you got it you want you become as a little child not act like a child and he, he wanted the disciples to look at it and, and to, to just size it up and see the traits and the characteristics and the qualities that the little child had, that's what he wanted them to have. And he said, become like a child. And, and you know, that means you be humble. You give up all that pretension of self-importance, self-righteous, independence, and, and turn to trust, and turn to trust in the heavenly God. He said now, uh, to become like a child, it's not just imitating the child behavior. He said, but examine yourself. See where you are. If need be, start over again. He said, you you know, you need to really check this thing out and see how you've been. Uh, line, see if you line up with, with the qualities that I see in this child. And, and then he told them, he warned them that, if any of them causes any of the little ones to stumble, there will be serious consequences. Mm -hmm. he, said they, he said, now they're going to fail. They, they would be better off. Now, this has got to be a serious thing because he's saying, you, if you mislead his children, causes them to stumble, or you mistreat them, he said, you'd be better off if a millstone were tied about your neck. And you, mm -hmm. you, you, well, that means you know that's a serious. That's serious. When you say right. you'd be better that way, well, then you don't know what else what's going to happen to you. If that's better, then the other got to be much worse. Mm -hmm. you see? Because when you treat a child good, when you receive a child, you receive in my name. It's just like receiving me. But when mm -hmm. you mistreat, it's just like mistreating me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, you got to be, you got to be careful. So he's saying, you see how this child is, this child is, it's got humility. He's very humble. He said, most of y'all are not humble. You hear worrying about who's going to be, who's the top person, who's the greatest in the kingdom. You, you don't need to worry about that. I've given you jobs to do. You got other things that are more important that you need to be worried about. You need to be worrying about the, 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 the people, the society, looking out for other folks. You you need to just get rid of some of that pride and some of that wanna be, some of that arrogance. Like I want to be the top person. I, I'm in charge. I I, I want to be the top. And so he says. Uh, <clears throat> he said until he said you know he said woe unto you who allow pride to make you think you can get away with anything. Now you got to be very careful. Sometimes I've seen people with pride, and that pride keeps building up and building up, and they think they can do what they want to. They think they, can, they think they can do anything they want to, and it's all right. And no, no, no. God is telling him, even his disciples that had 
had walked with him for years. He said, now, you know, don't think that just because you're my disciple and you're following me that you're going to get in the kingdom. You've got to be converted. I mean, then I, I know the heart that nobody else does. He said, That's so, right. you know, you got to be careful. He says, now, you don't just order, nobody automatically gets in. So, you, you see the things that are happening. You see the things I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you how humble this little child is, how mm-hmm. trusty, how innocent. That's the way you got to be if you're going to get into the kingdom of God. That's and right. you know, and if you're going to get into the kingdom of God, then, you know, you think about, you get it right, and you try to help someone else. You That's try right. to you try to help someone else along. That is the purpose of it. He said, that is your ministry. Because I won't be here all the time. So mm-hmm. you need to know what you have to do when I'm going back to heaven. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, and he said unto them, he said, you know, and when you look in Jeremiah 23, as I was looking at, you know, God gave us a, a, a similar warning against those who destroyed and scattered his flock. He said, now, if you mess with my children, the little ones, he called, the weak ones, and the immature ones. But he said, if you scatter my flocks or destroy them, you know, you're going to pay. Mm-hmm. And, he, and here's where we as pastors and church leaders and all, we need to take heed to this to avoid that punishment. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because uh, God has said if we destroy his flock or if we scatter his flock, we got to pay a price. That's right. And and, and, uh, and it says especially the leaders, pastors, and other responsible leadership, they must mm-hmm. take peace. And then, you know, as you look at some of this stuff, you know, I look like many of our ancestors, they raised the, the slave master's children. The, they did all the raising of the slave master's children. And then they had children of their own. And they, you know, the children played together. They had a good time and everything when they were growing up. And then, and the children didn't know any difference. They just know they enjoyed playing with them and they loved their playmates. But then they come an adult, come along and tell the little Slave master's son, you're better than than the slave son. And see, so that that little child didn't know about racism. That child didn't know about discrimination. They had a playmate and they were happy. But then somebody else comes along and tell them, and then tell them that well, you are better than the slaves. So they go up thinking they're better. Sometimes they end up joining the groups like the Ku Klux Klan and the white supremacists and all that. And, and the thing about it, they were innocent until someone steered them wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and they didn't know the difference. And they just played and had a good time together. But then, then an adult wasn't satisfied. He had to tell them different. So they would act different. And then, you know, um, many times, there used to be Westerns that came along. And Western is one of the things that I really like. And there was always that group called the Hatfields and the McCoys. And they hated each other. And, and, and they fought. They, they killed each other and all that stuff. And then at one time, someone asked them, said, well, what is that all about? I don't know. But they know that my daddy said that my granddaddy uh, did this and then the other side, the granddaddy didn't like it. I mean, this was thing passed from one generation to another. And that is, that's bad because all these generations, this one side hating the other side, and they don't know why. See, so, sometimes people in, in the community, in your family, or in the church, they decided they don't like a certain person, and they don't want you to like it. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things you have to be very careful about, that you don't follow someone else's path because the thing about it is, if they don't like someone, you don't even know what happened between them. So you don't go there and start taking sides. You back off and you pray. Mm-hmm. Amen. 
And sometimes, you know, and, and, and as we look at something, and, and I've seen so many grown-ups, they mistreat a child because they don't like the child parent, grandparents. Amen. Amen. Now, now, that's something, you know, that's sad. If you got out with the child's parents and grandparents, then maybe you need to set up with them. But the child has nothing to do with it. The child, the child don't choose his parents. Jesus does. Mm -hmm. So we need to we need to think about stuff like this. And so I'm saying uh, God is telling us here. Now we need to be careful how we treat people, especially children. Children are valuable to us. Uh, we don't we don't need to cast them aside because we don't know what God has in mind for that child. We don't know how many in that group might be Moses. We don't know how many other Abraham in that group. But the thing of it is, God said, if we mistreat His children, we got we got to pay. And so he's telling the disciples tonight, now, now don't think about your self-righteousness stuff now. That ain't going to get you there. You need to make sure. You need to line up with these requirements. You say, look at, you know, look at this child here. Humble, innocent. The child is openness. And so, you, oh, so can I say the same thing for y'all? And you make sure you, you you notice these qualities because you need to line up with that. That is the first one that you into the kingdom. Don't you worry about who's the greatest. You got to worry about getting in there. But and the disciples felt like they were already there and 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 they just want to know who was the top person. But no, no, that's not what the Lord said. And and He would tell the disciples. And communion just said, you need to be focusing on kingdom building. That anything that take your attention away from away from it, get rid of it. And he used the hand, the foot, and the eye. And, and you know, he said, if these things keep you out of heaven, then you need to get rid of. What he was saying was, you know, not you don't have to literally cut off your foot or your hand or, or gouge out your eye, but he's saying, you know, anything that keeps you away from the Word of God, anything that keeps you from following God, you need to get rid of it. You need to be careful for what he was saying that now. You, you know, these things that so easily bother you, that keep you sinning, that you you keep slipping and sliding. You need to, he said, you need to get rid of these things. And but you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking the things that he was talking about, the foot, the eye, and the hand. You know, but the main thing is that you got to get the inside right. Then you won't have to cut off nothing and throw it away. You got to get the inside right. And he said, you know, you keep. In Proverbs, it said, keep watch over your heart, because he said, that's where life begins. And in Matthew, it says, what comes out of the mouth is dark in the heart. That's why it's important to ask God to create in you a clean heart and a right spirit, and then you will be going the right way. And so, there was Christians who were supposed to be mature, who maybe is a little more advanced than some others, you're supposed to be the mouthpiece and the supporters for the little ones, the weak ones, and the immature ones. Yeah, so right. Those who we see uh, can't quite get up that hill, if you're on top of the hill, reach down and pick them up. That's right. And the, and the first thing you need to do, and then leave some of that stuff that they talk That's about. Right. Amen. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Live this stuff. Anybody can give a good talk. Anybody right. can, can say words that sound so good. And it sounds like you. The words make you sound like you're so smart. But are you living it? And this is what God is telling the disciples. You know, y'all been following me for a while now. We, you've seen me work miracles and, and all this stuff. But what have you learned? But you've got to know the truth and the main truth unless you become converted. 
and be like a little child. Don't you won't even see the kingdom, much less time I get in there. So Amen. I'm telling you, he said, I'm telling, telling you now, you, you got to change. Some things have got to change. He said mm -hmm. now, and, and you know, and those who think they got it made, it's just like when we were going to school, and I know a lot of us experienced that. But uh, even within our own race of people, uh, some people look down on us because we didn't have what they had. And their parents didn't want them to associate with us. Their right. children, their children was going to go to college. And those of us working out in the field looked like we didn't have a chance to do anything like that. You know, so they, they were in a, they, this what they said for us, they are going to college. They're going to be somebody. But you look at them now, years later, 50, 20, 30, 40 years later, some of them, they didn't do nothing like the parents thought to do it. But see, this is what I'm saying. The parents, the grown people are the one who is leading the children wrong. Right. So, so many of them have taught the children that you're better than this one, and you, you, you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. But... You don't plan their life. God, you don't know what God has in mind. God knows the heart of you and the child, and he knows when and if the child is going to go astray. Mm -hmm. he, knows, he already knows the one that's going to follow him. But then those of us that know better, we are charged with doing better. That's our, right. Our children... You know, like I said, the children are innocent when they come. The little baby, when the baby's crying, whoever picks the baby up, that satisfies the baby, and the baby gonna look for that person to do it again. That baby knows that person when he comes, that he's gonna pick him up and he starts to laughing and kicking. But the mm -hmm. thing about thing about it is, and the baby is good for years, but just as soon as someone tells the baby that one thing wrong, and you steer him off into a bad path. And this oh. is the way it is in our community and in our churches. We have Amen. to know what, what we are teaching, what we are preaching, what we are praying, and what we are saying is going to be of the Lord. It's got yes, to be of God. And if God ain't in it, then God won't have nothing to do with it, and it will yes. not succeed. That's right. The children are our, um, <clears throat> they, they are the future of the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need, we need to lead them in the right way, let them know, first of all, they are important. Mm -hmm. We That's need right. to let, let them know they're important. Then we need to teach them the right way to go, not the way that we want them to go, the right way to go. And, right. and teach them how to do, you know, how, how teach them how to help others because they are the, they're going to be the future. They're going to be the church of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and God wants us to, those that feel like they are mature, those that have been around a while and know some things, help them out. Help them up the hill. And not just the children. The children is important, but there are some grown folks that maybe they have just got into the faith. Maybe they're just coming around. They need help too. Amen. Amen. And some of them have been there a long time, but they won't own up to it, but they need it up too. All right. Amen. All of us need, need, we all need each other. Cause some of, Amen. Us, some of us at one level and some of the rest of them at another level. So I'm okay. just saying, we get together and we put it all together and with the help of God, we can all make it and we can do well. We can keep our children going, keep them straight. Anybody get weak and maybe fall by the wayside, we can help them. But we mm -hmm. got to get rid of that pride and that self-righteousness. Amen. Amen. We ain't where we think we are. Uh -uh. And we can't do what we think we can do. The That's song right. says we can't even walk unless he's holding our hand. Amen. I I can't get, if he don't hold my hand, I can't get no further. If he doesn't hold your hand, you can't get no further. So, right. so instead of focus on who, who is the greatest, who can do the best, who's the best speaker, who's the best teacher, who's the best singer. No, let's not worry about that. We worry, all of us is in this ministry of God. And this mm -hmm. we he don't have time for that. He just, in this, this lesson, he tells the disciples that, 
no, uh uh-uh. uh. He said, uh, you need to be focused on heaven. You need to be focused. So instead of focusing on power and achieving greatness and who's going to be this and who's going to be that, said, it would be far better. Y'all be a lot better off caring for the next portion in society. Mm-hmm. And so God has, God knows all of our hearts. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do, the outside might look good, but it's the inside that you really need to work on because mm-hmm. God is the inside. All of us can do some improvement, mm-hmm. but we, all of us need all of us to make it. And so, mm-hmm. so what we're saying, and you got to, and, and remember, the quote for the day, remember, one of the hardest jobs for kids that kids face today is learning good manners without saying it. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning. And I want to thank God for letting you teach that awesome lesson this morning. Because that, that lesson, all them lessons you've been teaching right here lately, is for our church and for our good. And like you were saying, like Christ was saying when he called his little one to him, he said, what you do to my little one, you are doing it to me. That's right. So that's why we need to get ourselves in order and stop putting self first and put God first because we want to elevate ourselves. We can't elevate ourselves. The devil can do it for you. But we got to, if you want to be elevated, you got to do the right thing and wait till God elevate you, not you try to elevate your own self. Amen. And he says that Anyone that wants to be the greatest must be a servant. That's right. Mm-hmm. Since Nancy, what I got out of it is I have to take a look at myself and know that what I do, these children, and not only children, because we are all babes in Christ. We still learn no matter how long we've been on this journey with him. But that people are learning from what they see from us when we call ourselves Christians and we want to be Christ-like. Are we truly being Christ-like? What are they seeing? What are we displaying? So I learned I have to um, be more vigilant in my journey and in my mouth in what I'm saying and what I'm doing because I don't want nobody to fall by the wayside because I'm saying I'm Christ, but I'm doing the work of the devil. That's what I learned. That's right, because see this quote that said that one of the hardest jobs that kids face is learning good manners without seeing it. That's right. Thank you for that blessing. Mm. Are there any other things? Yes, uh-huh. man, it's, it's not about us. It's all about God. Mm. That's right. Mm. And trust me, mm. you've done a very good job teaching the Sunday school lesson this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. I hope we've all gotten some out of it, and I hope we all enjoy it. Uh, I'd like to do that, and put I put a lot of time in it, hoping that that you know that it will help all of us. Amen. Amen. I get some money every time I be waiting to make Sunday right now. <laughs> Some people you listen to you say big words and you think they up there, but they just the arm as we are. And but we they just think they just want us to think there's more. I got more power than we have in, in these days, time sometimes. But you know if they don't they're the like we study. They still is almost like we we just um they we just a high mind as they are. That's right. That's right. But we can learn, huh? I said, go ahead on, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the things about it, we spend up too much time trying to impress man instead of trying to please God. Yeah, right. <laughs> some folks think you, they, you look at some folks and say, oh, they, they, they think of the one that uh, it kind of, kind of, this, I said, just a little slow and some folks, some people. 
and you can look at them and look at one that got all that use all this powerful words and stuff. They don't know that the one that's slow can can be just as almond as high minded they are. Amen to that. The thing about it, when you doing teaching, preaching, or whatever the case may be, you use words that everybody knows. You don't have to take take that big word, look it up in the dictionary, and break it down so that we can talk and understand each other because you can talk all day. If nobody understands what you're saying, you're wasting your time in there and God. Yes, right. Amen. Mm-hmm. So and, we, and what I learned... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And so we have to be humble and, and think about uh, we're working for God, not for us. That's right. That's right. And what I learned, Sister Nancy, I listen to you, and I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for what God put on you and inspire you to say to teach us. But what I'm learning from you is you got to invest your time in it. To bring a word to God's people. You can't be no last minute, oh, I don't feel well today type of person. You got to apply yourself through the rain and through the storm. That's what I'm learning from you, and I thank you for applying yourself to weather in the storm. Well, one thing about it, I've, I've committed to do it until such a time that I'm replaced or whatever the case may be. So I know I can't let nobody down. I've got to get on it. Whether I want to, whether I got a mind to do it, whether I want to do something else, I, I, this is important. I know I've got to do this because yes, somebody, somebody is depending on me. That's right. I am. I am because I, I tell you, it's just like a sermon to me. You know, I'm getting fed, and that's what I come to hear and to go to church and, and to be on this conference call for. Well, cool. Well, I thank God for everybody that tells me that they are getting something out of it. It feels like my my teaching is not in vain. If not, are there any other comments? Yes, uh, Brother Dan. So I just want to echo what everybody has said. I don't need to add to or take away. But again, um, I do. I don't want to say I, I had to leave last Sunday. Um, for whatever reason, but I didn't go into that, but uh, um, I, I had wanted to say something last Sunday, especially after the young female had um, spoke up and, and uh, addressing um, last Sunday's message. But one thing that stood with me was uh, when she was uh, responding to the message, she said that, um, I forgot what the subject was, but anyway, that um, the person had to be in the Bible, had to be true to, well, learn to, be true to themselves before they could be true to God and others. So, Again, that's one of my favorites, and that's what I see with you. Um, um, as long as you're being true to yourself, you can bring forth the message with the meaning. I mean, anybody can bring forth Amen. a message, but with the meaning, and, and, and I can look up to folk like that. So just keep on doing what you're doing. Um, as a, well, I can't say a young man no more, just turned 60, but uh, 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 for me, you just, um, um, I look forward to every Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school, um, and, and, and I got a lot of followers and, and that's all I hear about our Sunday school. When you went out earlier, somebody sent me a message saying, hey, what happened? So not only am I getting something out of this, but what brings me joy is to be able to share, uh, what my church is doing, especially, um, Sunday school because a lot of people tune in. So not only am I receiving a blessing, but you are blessing a lot of more folk. And, and folk, I run into folk tell me that they, they also know you. So that's a good thing. So I appreciate you. And everybody have a good morning. Amen. Well, I too want to thank you for that. I try to remember that somebody may get something. Out. Somebody may hear something that may help them. So, you know, I have to give it all I got. Because I'm working for the Lord. Not me, not, not me, not Anderson Chapel, but I'm talking about the Lord. Amen. And, I, and I, have, I have to live what I talk about. All right. Amen. So are, are there any other comments? Uh, I enjoy it as always, Mrs. Nancy. Thank you. And you're doing a good job. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you.
Are there any other comments? If they are not, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy Newton, for the word this morning. And uh, I know everybody's been putting in a little bit after she was asking questions, but get someone to get down um, to what they learned about the lesson this morning. Anyone? Well, I just, as this uh, topic in six, topic was they won. The one of a childlike quality, where you know, as we coming up as a child and stuff, Jesus had already placed us in a line that He wanted us to come up in. So, I think that is a perfect way of saying coming up as a child and uh, being like uh, God want us to be as we come up this morning. Learn His learn His word and be a shepherd for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, our sex trip is on this morning. Uh, so, Mr. Johnson, uh, if you did not take notes, um, you give me a, give me a minute, I will. I would give the uh, minutes. Give me just a minute. While, while the pastor's doing that, I just want to add that I can't really see how many people is watching while it's happening, but once I... Um, uh, stop the, the, the recording. I normally have about a hundred people who have viewed. Oh, my. Yeah. 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 But that was a good lesson this morning. Like the uh, mother, we appreciate that was a good lesson. Reverend Face said it was a good lesson that was taught this morning. Uh, all right, uh, Teacher Ricks, uh, <laughs> the Sunday School Open this morning was a song by Mother Barnes, Love Lifted Me. Prayer was given by Brother Faison. The lesson topic, The Wonderful Wonders of Childlike Qualities, Background Passages, Matthew 18, 1 through 9, Mark 10 through 15. Key verse. Whosoever therefore shall humble themselves as this little child, the same that's greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 18, 4. The lesson was reviewed by uh, Trustee Wooten. Remarks was given uh, from uh, a huge selection number from the class. Everyone saying to enjoy the lesson today. And there was uh, great comments about the ability of the teacher the attendance in house was 11. Attendance online, uh, pre conference call on this end was uh, 12. Uh, Brother Dancy, do you have a number there? No, like I said, uh, 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 Pastor, I, I, uh, I can only see just a few folk and I, and I, I don't want to give that number.